Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone I'm sorry for not announcing proper time for the talk today because I have got a lot of technicality and technical problems plus today is the New Year's Eve and we wish you happy days every day not only for New, for, for New Year's Eve our talk today is about my account for 2018 why I'm making this title for all of us today because any and each one of us who is responsible for social work who is a social worker who is a community leader must be accountable to the community to the people to the needy inside out and this is a part of transparency for any leadership whether it's political whether it's social whether humanitarian whether that is whatever you call it it has to be an account and he or, he or she has to be accountable for this that's why a few months ago I talked about my shame which means the mistakes I have done while I was doing this social and humanitarian work now I'm putting the year record before the year ends tonight okay so each and every one of you who claim to be working for the community must become forward and show his or his account to the public. This is a very good friend of mine. First of all, <coughs> Dr. Reda Sukkar, he's from Egypt. He is the one who started and founded the food bank in Egypt more than 20 years ago. I want you to make a prayer for him because he is suffering from cancer. So, but the food bank started as a very, very small initiative. Like any one of you, young men and young women, can start something bigger than the food bank. It was in the basement of his house and started with collecting these food items to distribute it for the people. And this is his book, which unfortunately is written in Arabic. But for the people who speak Arabic, can buy it from the library. Call it in Arabic, Shakawit Sukkar, or the Naughty Sukkar. Sukkar is a family name. Okay. Why I'm putting Dr. Rida on the, on, on the table today? For the respect of what he has been doing for more than 20 years. Okay. For the achievement that the food bank went out of Egypt to different countries. I think 30 or 7, 30, more than 37 or 35 food banks in different countries it becomes an institution then from the food bank they started to make what cloth bank and uh, with the code in arabic uh, 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 cloth bank kisa uh, bank al kisa and another one which is bank shifa which is a cure bank with the medicine so the food bank the cure bank and the cloth bank Thanks to Dr. Reda Sukkar for doing this. Let us go to our talk. Tonight will be the New Year's Eve. People will spend their time, their money, their effort till tomorrow. Dancing, maybe singing, maybe watching telly, maybe overfeeding themselves with food and other stuff. But tonight also could be the last night in our life. So we have to put our account forward to each and every one of you so for you young men and women don't be distracted only by the new year's eve glamour of going out to count down 10 9 8 7 6 4 5 3 2 1 hey this is not good enough for us for a social community worker he has or she has to look back at the year past and to learn from the achievement and the mistake she or he has done Thank you, Dr. Reda. Sorry, where to go? Oh, sorry, this way? Which one? Okay. My travels. I made 31 international visits in 2018, visited 17 countries, I spent in these visits 143 days, maybe more. This is crude figures. 
But I believe we did it, we wanted to do it because I want you young men and young women to stand up and say, hey, why don't we do these things and become better than this man? If this man can manage to travel here and there and do that, we can do better and better. When we come out from our ghettos, we can out from our depression and we can out from this gloomy atmosphere of Islamophobia, xenophobia, and all this kind which is affecting all of us. 17 countries, 31 international visits, 143 days. The countries that I visited, if you can look at them, I made 12 visits to different countries. Like I went to Pakistan once, I went to Cameroon once, I went to Central African Republic once, and so it's 12 countries, each one of them one visit. To Turkey, I made seven visits. Some of them could be three, four weeks. Because of what? Because in Turkey, there are the Syrian refugees, about three, four million, five million people. There's Yemeni refugees, there's Iraqi refugees, and there is other refugees in the country. Whenever I used to go to Turkey, I did not go to Istanbul or to Ghazi Antab for the baklava or for the uh, baklava or uh, kunafa and the sweet and the kebab and whatever. No. There are about five to six million refugees and asylum seekers in Turkey. And what we have been doing in Turkey in different cities like Istanbul, Ghazi Antab, Orfa, Kellis, Hatay, uh, and the other one, it is uh, at the border. Uh, I can't remember the name of the city at the border. So these countries were going there to train and to educate the young, growing civil society organization to stand up and to respond to the needs of the people inside Syria and inside Iraq. Kuwait, I visited four times for different conferences. Last of them was a uh, 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 few weeks back about how can to find hunger and to provide 2.4 billion meals for the uh, uh, displaced, internally displaced, external uh, and refugees. I visited Qatar also three times uh, during the last year for visiting or different organization and attending one or two conferences. But in Iraq, we visited Iraq three times. And here is the challenge. People say Iraq is not safe. I say no way. It is safer than it was before. In 2014 and 2015, when I visited the first time uh, to organize uh, the workshop for World Humanitarian Summit, it was uh, security checkpoints at every corner of every street. Nowadays, when I was there and at the beginning of December, the story is different. We go out to pray in different mosques. We go out to eat in different restaurants. We go out to have a walk here and there and here and there. So Iraq said from January 2018 till December 2018, three visits. Each visit was about seven days to ten days. So this is for Iraq. And this includes Baghdad and Arbil. But the three times we went to Baghdad. Uh, Germany is just uh, visits for uh, different uh, 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 management meetings. So, 31 visits to these countries. Here also, by the region. When you look at the region, MENA is, means Middle East and North Africa. What the highest, which is include Libya, include Qatar, include Kuwait, include Iraq. That's why 11 visits to the MENA region, followed by Turkey to respond to the Syrian, Yemeni, Iraqi refugees, followed to Europe, Europe which includes, I did not put Turkey in Europe, Europe include uh, Switzerland, include uh, Germany, include other countries in Europe that we have visited. Okay, Africa, uh, three countries, which is uh, Somalia, which is as well uh, Central African Republic, which is as well uh, Cameroon. Asia is, Afga uh, is, is Pakistan, 
is Azerbaijan as well as is uh, what else you call it uh, Bangladesh for the Rohingya people. So the total visit to this so re, MENA region because I've got four or five countries, Iraq, uh, Kuwait, Qatar, and Libya, and the rest is in front of you. This is my account before of you. You can criticize me. You can come back and tell me why didn't you go here and there, and you can advise me as well. If I go by, by, by month by month, there's too many. Too many. But let me pick and choose one or two of them, or three or four of them. First of all, why did we go to Libya at that time, to Tripoli? And people are saying uh, Tripoli is not safe, Benghazi is not safe, uh, Derna is not safe. Yes, but we have to work with the people who need to be helped at the time to increase the standard of their accountability and governance. And in this time, <coughs> there were two conferences there was one workshop and one conference. The one workshop was about, uh, about actually de-risking. How the people, the small organization, raising fund and how they are dealing with transferring the fund outside the country or receiving funding from other country and the restriction of the banking industry on fund, fund transfer. This was one thing about the, the de-risking one. The second one was actually is a conference which is the international day of the Arabic language and you can imagine somebody like myself speaking about Arabic language which was uh, like for me it was a joke but alhamdulillah I managed to deliver a speech in Arabic to the Arabs and try to do something which is very important so Tripoli we went there it was safe it was safe and it is safe so don't come and tell me Libya is not safe maybe one or two zones in the country have good security alert, but actually Tripoli was safe. People have to go and find a way for them to uh, rebuild their own country again, even to invest in such a country. It's one of the uh, areas. In Iraq, as I mentioned, three times we have visited from January 2018 till December 2018. In January, we managed to visit different cities such as in Mosul, such as uh, uh, Baghdad, such as Arbil, and such as others. Then we went again for a conference with the uh, International Committee of Red Cross and International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent to look about the strategy of the MENA region, which is the Middle East and North Africa in Baghdad. There was more than 150 delegations from different countries in Baghdad. Safe. And safety at that time. The last one, which was a dream, which was actually at the beginning of December, the third visit. What for? There was a, a conference organized by us, by, by, by Iraq Red Crescent, and us as partners, such as Islamic Leaf, such as Humanitarian Forum, such as uh, World Federation Organization, and other organization to organize a conference with the civil society in Iraq to look at how can we rebuild Iraq again. And this was two days conference at the beginning of uh, December. So at that time, we were actually feeling that we need to interact with the local Iraqi civil society organization with the championship, with the championship of the, uh, uh, with, the uh, with the leadership, not the championship, with the leadership of uh, Iraq Red Crescent and trying to empower the local civil society sector to do more and more and more and more for Iraq. Turkey, there are many, many visits in Turkey, many workshops, many workshops for different countries, different groups, different uh, uh, talks, different discussion, different, different. Because nowadays, if we look at the Syria problem, it, it looks at the last stage of peace building and starting to look at the future of Syria as a new state born after this seven or eight years of conflict. And that's what actually our uh, 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 advice to the Syrian civil society organization inside Syria or the Syrian organization inside, uh, inside Turkey to look up at a new roadmap that they can make to go to work in this new Syria 
uh, which is coming uh, soon. Why? Because the operation of the United Nations in Ghazi Antab moved to uh, uh, Damascus and it, be, it, it, it become, instead of having regional office for Syria, it becomes the representative office for Syria. That's why there are too many visits to meet with different organizations. And if you want to look at all the talks happen in, in Turkey for Syria, you can go and visit my uh, YouTube and uh, 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 listen to it in Arabic and in English. I said Kuwait and Qatar, يعني, conferences and partnership and building the capacity of the uh, organization there. And looking at the regulation, uh, uh, was discussing some uh, regulatory matter and governance issue with local organization and with local governments. Germany, just meetings. Ghazi and that's what I'm saying, you see, when you look at this uh, from April 6th, then going to Kuwait, then coming back to Ghazi Antab, and so on. So we spend more time in, 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 uh, in uh, Turkey for this kind of interaction with the local Syrian organizations. Again, Istanbul for this various meetings with NGO. Somalia was a very remarkable visit. It was uh, in Ramadan, and it was in the second half of Ramadan. And why Somalia and Ramadan? Because we have a vision and we have a mission and have a message. The vision is every year it rains in Somalia, but the water are drained into the ocean. Every year in, the, in Djibouti, it rained in uh, Djibouti, but I saw it with my own eyes. Actually, the water is wasted into the ocean as well, onto, 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 and Red Sea. So what we need in this kind of countries to start to capture the water, to start to stop the water, to stop to build the sand dams and this kind of dams that actually we can retain the water. Which by retaining the water, you'll be able to start building a community around the water. This was our message when we visited Somalia, when we visited Magdishu and Hergisa and other smaller cities in the Somaliland in the north. That's why the main visit in Somalia in the second half of Ramadan this year, which is about the end of May, June, is to talk about how can we collectively build new dams, actually to retain the water and start make a lot of agriculture project and bring and the, uh, the animals and the community around it. From Somalia, it, the, the journey started how? It started Birmingham, Istanbul, Istanbul, Makadishu, Makadishu, Hargisa, Hargisa, Makadishu, Makadishu, Istanbul, Istanbul. Istanbul what? Dakka? Dakka, Cox's Bazaar, Cox's Bazaar, Dakka. Uh, Dakka, Istanbul, Istanbul, Birmingham. This was about, about two weeks or two and a half weeks. Very nice journey. I don't know how many thousand miles. You can look at your, your telephone and tell me how many thousand miles, Brother Tom or Brother uh, Munem. You see... Birmingham, Istanbul, Istanbul, Magdishu, Magdishu, Hergisa, Hergisa, Magdishu, Magdishu, uh, Magdishu, Istanbul, Istanbul, Dakka, Dakka, Koksa Bazar, Koksa Bazar, and just and go back. I don't know how many thousands of miles in this journey in the last 10 days of Ramadan. The visit into Bangladesh is to see, to, to, to highlight two things. First of all, the plight of the refugees who came from Myanmar, the Rohingya refugees came from Myanmar to Koksa Bazar which is nearly, nearly eight or 900,000 people registered there. Okay. The second issue is we need to help the local community in Bangladesh who are very shrewd and very good, especially in development projects and microfinance and livelihood projects. We saw great women and the great men and young men and women are doing incredible work and want to earn their living because they are able to produce something because they are actually clever, they have the talent, and they have the skills. There's two things. Local community empowerment, uh, livelihood program, microfinance, and visiting the Rohingya refugees in, uh, in uh, Cox's Bazaar. This is Bangladesh. Uh, Bosnia is another case. Bosnia and Greece. This was actually, it was Bosnia and Greece. About nearly, it took about nearly 10 days, 12 days. In Bosnia, we still... 
they still need a lot of work, but they need development work. They need empowerment. They need capacity building. They need microfinance. They need livelihood program. Because the women and the men in Bosnia don't want hand out. They don't want any hand out from any one of you. They want you to build the greenhouse with them. They can produce things. They can give them animals, give them seeds, make the greenhouse for them, and let them to be empowered to do this, to be able to stand on their feet. The visit for Greece was very, very heartbreaking or very, very painful to our hearts. Why? Because we're still seeing at least 80,000 refugees come still in the Lasvos, Lasvos Island, and other islands as well, and even including the capital, uh, uh, Athens, from Yemen, from Somalia, from uh, Iraq, from uh, Syria, from other countries. Some of them are registered inside the camps by United Nations, but a lot of them are not in the camp. They're living in a very appalling situation and need a lot of help. And we met three excellent families. None of them are Muslims. One of them is British couple who are there to help those refugees by having a community center for them and by having another center to distribute clothes and uh, non-food items such as bambas and other things for women to the refugees. This is number one. Another family, which is a Greek family, okay, which actually he was a businessman and he had his restaurant on the island to earn his money. But he, when he saw those refugees coming, he wanted to help them. The government told him, no, you are actually either to do business or do charity. He closed down the business and he changed his restaurant into a, a, a community center and is feeding the refugees as well. It's a Greek family. The third one is a Spanish family is doing another food distribution, hot food distribution as well. Plus what we need from you, uh, brothers and sisters, men, young men and women, to go and visit these areas and to discover the agony of the people living there and nobody is talking about them and there is no funding for them. Uh, Turkey again, Turkey again, but many cities you can see from the first of, uh, go back here. This was uh, one trip yeah, from 27th of August to 15th of September, because it includes Istanbul, Ghazi Antab, uh, Urfa, Hattai, uh, Kellis, and uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I don't remember the name of the other cities. Anyway, many cities and many workshops. Germany again, Istanbul again, 20 October, meeting with people as well. Azerbaijan was our first time to visit Azerbaijan. End of September, isn't it? End of, end of October. Azerbaijan is a booming country. A lot of people are going there for tourism. A lot of people are going there for investment, but still, the civil society organization needs your help, need capacity, but they don't need handout. They don't need money from you, but they want each and every one of you to go and give them a hand. How can they run organization? How they be accountable to the government, accountable to the community, accountable to the donor? That's what you need to go to this country. This was another memorable trip for myself, which is the, where is Pakistan? Pakistan is not written here, unfortunately. Uh, after Azerbaijan, the first week of the first nine days I spent in Pakistan. Okay, from the 2nd to the 9th of November in Pakistan. I wanted to visit two areas in Pakistan. One of them called Balochistan, the other one called Kashmir. And to wait to the security clearance to visit this area, it took me about three months plus to get the security clearance to be able to visit the two areas. You can see all the videos which I put on my YouTube in English and Arabic about the need in Balochistan. There's a drought for the last three years. It's dry, it's, it's, there's drought, there's dry, uh, dry weather, windy weather, and cold weather. Even during my three, four days when I was in, in Balochistan traveling in the middle of the desert, you see, I can see my skin was cracking and bleeding. And this is the condition of the people. 
They need projects for $5,000, $10,000, $15,000 dollars. Not magnificent. Balochistan is constitute about 50 to 60 percent of the size of Pakistan. It has most of the resources in Pakistan, but as well, it's a very, very undeveloped area. Please, the brother and sister from Pakistani origin, go back and visit Balochistan. Don't only go back and visit your own town, your own village, because Balochistan needs you most. The second part in Pakistan, which I visited Kashmir as well, great women and great men are doing incredible work. Incredible work need to be supported on the livelihood program, on the education, as well as on the education, livelihood, and water program. We went from the, in the same journey from the 2nd of, of, of November to the 20th of November. Yeah, it, it went from uh, Birmingham, Manchester, Manchester, Istanbul, Istanbul, uh, Islamabad, Islamabad, Quetta, Quetta by car. Six or seven hour drive to Shagi, and actually we came back to uh, uh, Quetta, Islamabad, Islamabad, Bagh, Bagh in, in Kashmir. Then after that, going back to Istanbul. And from Istanbul, we went to where? To Cameroon. Cameroon in Africa, by the way. It's not in the uh, neighborhood of Pakistan or India. Cameroon, and in Cameroon, we spent about 10 days between Cameroon and actually Central African Republic. In Cameroon, Poverty speaks at its depth. The videos on my YouTube and on the Facebook, you can look at it in Arabic and English. Then we went to Central African Republic. We knew that 2014 there was a massacre. There was a conflict, big conflict, and hundreds of thousands of Muslims from this area uh, migrated to Cameroon and migrated to Chad. And they're still in a very difficult situation, living either in Cameroon or in Chad, at least 300,000 of those people coming outside uh, uh, Cameroon and staying inside this neighborhood. Qatar, Kuwait, uh, Baghdad, I mentioned it again. And Italy was the last one. I went there to be with the young people, the young European, the young growing up youth like you. Also, the YouTube has got all my videos and my talks, you can go and look at it. And there's an energy in the youth in Europe, in UK, in America, in Germany, other. But you need to be able to communicate with them. You need to be able to understand what they need and to address their needs and to manage their expectation. And to manage their expectation and to be able to be uh, understanding the philosophy of their culture. Because they don't have the same culture like we have. You think that they're his son or he's your daughter? Yeah, but they have been brought up in different countries. They've got different values, different culture, different messages for us to learn. I learned a lot from the young men and women from the age of 15 as a volunteer, 16 and 17. And those remind me of my good old days. When I was 15 in Egypt, I was playing football in the street, not doing any voluntary activity. When I was 8 or 9, I was selling lollipop on the corner of my, my avenue, or my, my see, because I was trying to test my ability as a businessman. How can we make money out of selling a stick? A honey, honey stick, what do you call it, honey stick? This uh, brown one. For about, I used to buy it for about three, 0.3 p uh, penny, 0.3 penny, and this is for uh, 0.5 penny each, to make a 0.2 penny in each, in each one of them. But they are great young, young, young men and women in this area. Coming back to that, this is, my, this is some of my accounts, by the way. It's not all my accounts. But the message today is two things. First, you have to honor the gentleman and make a prayer for him that God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will help him to uh, uh, overcome his uh, sicknesses and for his great achievement. Second is anyone of us who stands as community worker and community leader must be accountable and must show his or her account every month or every year what I have done for the community if I, can, if I claim that I'm a community leader. What impact my travel or your travel or his travel or her travel and the expenses that I claim for my work at the end of the year. Because I might have spent on my travel maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars which go into waste. You have to leave behind the message for the people to follow you, 
to educate them, to empower them, to motivate them, and to lift up their uh, awareness level. Thank you, uh, brothers and sisters. We will meet in the, in the Arabic, uh, my account in Arabic, in about 20 minutes. Stay tuned and thank you. And I wish every day is a happy day for you. Not only tonight. Please remember, drink and driving is, is forbidden. Drinking for the Muslims is forbidden. And even for the Christians is forbidden. And even for the Jews is forbidden. But they actually go and twist uh, the, the arm of the philosophy of thinking or the theology. Okay, please, please, please look after yourself tonight and every night. And be accountable to your family, be accountable to your community, be accountable to your Lord as well. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. See you in 20 minutes. And I will come back to you in 20 minutes, inshallah, in Arabic.